everyone. How are you doing? Live here for our weekly training, but today we're being joined by Manu Molina to speak about how to host your own retreats. And specifically, we're going to sp give you a step-by-step -step guide to actually make sure all of the aspects that you need to take into account are considered. Manu's already here. Accepting you, Manu, but it doesn't show up yet. Yeah! <laughs> Hello! Hello! Manu. It's so good to see you. It's been forever. Yes. yes, so good to see you. It's been a while, huh? I think the last time, well, I, I honestly have no idea, but at least a year, I think. I think at least a year. The last time we were actually talking also about retreats and I was in Thailand back then and remember there was that cat playing with my earphones. True. Wow. wow. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a long time ago. Long, and, long time ago, yeah. Well, amazing. Well, Manu, let me introduce you quickly for those that don't know you. Manu and I have been working obviously alongside each other and we've collaborated quite a few times. Uh, here doing our Instagram and Facebook lives. We even had a workshop together. But for those that don't know Manuel, you focus on helping wellpreneurs setting up their retreat. You also help mm -hmm. them build their business. Mm -hmm. What is it that they really need to know about you? Uh, well, you said it all, um, Annie. I my my focus is basically to to help uh, yoga and wellnesspreneurs with uh, business and marketing related stuff, uh, which are things that usually we tend to be a little bit, sometimes afraid of marketing, sometimes we have a little bit of a, some sort of uh, rejection, but you know, my, my goal when I work with, uh, with yoga teachers and wellness trainers is to make this fun and basically to, to, to embrace that entrepreneur, uh, business owner site that uh, it's so important. And uh, because uh, since 2008, basically, I've been immersed in the retreat um, sector, in the retreat industry. Basically, my focus also goes a lot towards retreats. Mm -hmm. um, many of uh, the people in my community, they are interested in hosting a retreat. Uh, some of my clients also, they, they have this goal of organizing this retreat, but they, you know, they, they have this amazing dream, but they feel overwhelmed with all of the logistics, the marketing and, and all of that stuff. So that's me. I'm the person who basically helps them to do that. Mm -hmm. um, what else you should know about me is that I've also been a yoga teacher and a, and a, a personal trainer. And um, since, 2020, uh, since 2019, I've been an entrepreneur. I've been on and off. And I say on and off because in 2022, I took this opportunity, this job opportunity that it was one of the time, those that you cannot miss, I, I have this opportunity to work as retreat director for Six Senses Ibiza, which is a, a international uh, hotel brand. Um, uh, they are uh, really well known because they are a wellness brand. And then I took that opportunity, but now here I am back in the again, uh, again, helping uh, yoga and wellness partner with retreat related stuff. Yeah, amazing. Honestly, I think you're the best person to speak to. First of all, because your energy and your drive to help these people is amazing. It's really inspiring. But also your experience really shows that actually this is how you do it and this is how it's going to be successful. There is work to do, but it's simple and it doesn't need to take an endless or extremely a long um, amount of time if you do this step by step mm -hmm. and put in the right the things well, I can't think of my words. I'm so excited to be here with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but let me get back to this because retreats, I think it's something I see in the community a lot as well. We work with yoga teachers, wellpreneurs, building out an international career, gaining confidence in their teaching skills, first of all, but most of them do want to do that. 
to maybe host a retreat or build an online business or something that expands their career opportunities. I believe that no matter your business model, a retreat has a lot of benefits, a lot of perks. From your experience, what are the, the, the benefits as a business owner? Mm -hmm. From my experience and because of the way that I am, um, Annie, I really value freedom, you know, and having the freedom to, to work uh, from wherever you are in the world. Uh, you know that I have a Thai husband <laughs> who lives in Bangkok. And, and so, uh, you know, this is a very long story, but um, I, I try to be there as much as possible. And of course, you know, the, the best way, the, the best uh, way that fits my lifestyle is to have that kind of freedom. So working online and also specifically work, uh, talking about uh, organizing your own retreats allows you for that freedom. Because honestly, when you organize a retreat, usually it's going to last for one week, 10 days and so on. But there is so much preparation. And you, Annie, uh, Annie, sorry, <laughs> you, Annie, said it very well. You say that it takes work. It is true. It takes work to organize everything. But the alternative not to do that work is to put your retreat out there and, you know, just like kind of losing your time, your retreat is not going to be solved because you want to have all of your ducks in a row, so mm -hmm. to speak. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. I think this is... This is one... Please go for it. Go ahead. <laughs> you, you go. Yeah. No, I was going to say that this is one of the things that I value the most is that, uh, to be able to have that freedom. Of course, there are so many other things that that um, that other retreat leaders may organize as well. As for example, um, uh, you know, having um, offering this transformative experience. A, a retreat, in my experience, this is something that I've seen and I see it again and again, when someone joins a retreat, uh, when you see the retreat participants, the first day, they look like someone, but then after four or five days, after one week, after 10 days, the retreat, they look like a completely different person. Yeah. And there is, uh, it's almost, I see this almost like a kind of a container for transformation. This is a really, really um amazing place where people get uh, because it's not just traveling somewhere uh, some retreats can be done in a local uh, you know it doesn't have to be international but it's the matter of being with other like-minded people w doing some kind of holistic practice like yoga meditation whatever that might be all of that it's almost like creating alchemy mm. and at the end of the trip you see like happy faces and that's one of the most incredible things of course mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, it makes me think, especially for me personally, an online business, I speak to my students every day. <laughs> we've got WhatsApp groups, we've got the Facebook group here on Instagram, we send messages. Um, but there is such power in actually being in the same place, going on a similar experience, mm -hmm. experiencing similar sensations, feelings, and be able to share that in the moment. It allows for mm -hmm. such connections with people um, and, and, and lifelong friends and experiences that you would oh, keep totally. sharing back to. So there's a lot totally. of benefits, mm -hmm. really, really a lot of benefits. Totally. Um, one thing that I would like to add to this, but maybe you want to speak to that concept as well, is that I see one of the biggest problems, I would say, are I don't like to call it a mistake, but I do think there is a better alternative. Teachers that are getting out there, starting their career, and just teach yoga classes. Mm -hmm. Go with this. You want to speak to that? <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> of course. Uh, I mean, of course, it all depends at the end of the day, and I know you are also an advocate for this, uh, Annie. Um, you look to create a business that uh, comes with your lifestyle. For some people, perhaps teaching yoga classes, it's what they want to do. For me, that it's okay as long as they have a strategy that it's going to make teaching those classes sustainable in a way. Like what I would then uh, recommend it for any yoga teacher to, 
to kind of do the studio or run into studio kind of work because that can be very overwhelming and I don't think it has like a, 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 a financially speaking I don't think it's it's a wise choice to just teaching classes from retreat to retreat and so on if all you want to do is teaching but maybe you have a different kind of program in which you offer like kind of long term uh, high ticket, uh, you know, like uh, six months programs or something like that, that might be a better alternative maybe. And this is exactly what, um, uh, w when it comes to a retreat, of course, we know it's like a shorter, it's not like a six month retreat. I wish I could do a six month retreat, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> it's not there. I don't think maybe someone is doing them. I don't know. But um, uh, but yeah, it's um, it's the the similarities would be like it's a high ticket program. It's a transformational program, as it would be like a six months uh, yoga classes. Or that's the the common thing that it would be. Mm -hmm. One thing I don't want to to forget uh, uh, before we move on, Annie, I want to say to everyone who is watching this live or maybe the recorded video, they we have prepared a killer. PDF file with everything that we are talking about today, plus a lot of links and resources and everything. Whoever wants to get that, I know you got the link and you can share with, uh, they can just DM you, DM me, or they can just go to the link in my bio and they will find the, the link to access this PDF, mm. which has everything that we're going to be talking about today. Exactly. Yeah, and for those that received an email from me earlier today to join us live, that link is also in the email, so you can download it from there too. Amazing. So there's lots of benefits, lots of perks, not only for you as a retreat coach or a business owner expanding your career opportunities, maybe next to your schedule, you've got these transformative experiences once or twice a year. For your participants, freedom, adventure, transformational experiences, lifelong friends, there's memorable activities that really last a, li a lifetime. Mm -hmm. But now we know, yeah, we know that we want to host a retreat. We're ready to do this. <laughs> Where do we start? <laughs> All right, very good. Let's dive in, right? <laughs> okay. Well, um, Annie, the first thing that I would uh, like to, to start with is a disclaimer. And my disclaimer is that, of course, there is so much. When it comes to running a retreat, there are so many fa facets and so many aspects and everything. But what we're going to be talking about today are those very first aspects. And it, um, it has to do with all of the creation slash, uh, slash marketing. Because there are so many things to touch upon, and I'm super happy, Annie, if you want to come back another day and we talk another about another aspects, more logistical aspects regarding uh, when you do the retreat and stuff. But today we're gonna focus on those essential first aspects. Okay? Exactly. In really? that initial phase, yes. Please go ahead. No, I'm listening. I think you've got this. <laughs> okay. You go for it. <laughs> okay, amazing. I'm full of energy, as you can see. I love, I love retreats. I, I feel super passionate about that. Um, but yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to give the disclaimer because um, obviously there are so many things to to consider, and this is we are focusing on the initial phase. Yeah. So. Having said that, I also know that among uh, your community, my community, we have people who are maybe at the beginning of their teaching journey and some people that are more experienced. Mm -hmm. So for those who are at the beginning of their teaching journey and maybe they are dreaming about running a retreat in the future, there is uh, there are three things that I would like to share that you can start doing. If this is you, if you're at the beginning of your journey and you want to run a retreat in the future, of course, one of the first things, and I'm sure, Annie, you have something to, to say also here, it's to gain teaching or coaching experience. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I think when you host a retreat, there's already so many things that you need to take into account. And you want to be, you want to feel confident when you get there. You want to feel confident leading leaders. You're not just going guiding them through a yoga experience or yoga class anymore, but a full experience. 
So having experience, knowing what you're doing, being able to adapt, being able to go with the flow, to um, react to certain situations that you can't predict beforehand is really, really important. So experience helps. It also helps you to already build a community of people that are ready to go to your retreat. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And that takes me to the next point. That point is exactly over there. This is something that you can do right now. It's to start building that community. Of course, my number I think that the first, the best way to build a community, if if you have that community in person, that it's a good way because when you get to connect with someone in person, uh, it's kind of faster to generate that trust factor. But if you are have an online business, as is our case, we work a lot online. So the best way, the preferable way for me of building that community, is to have an email list. Mm -hmm. This is something you can start doing right now even if you are at the beginning of your journey you can go ahead connect with those people you are teaching already get those emails and then start nurture them this is something that it's gonna be helpful for when you start marketing your retreat later on mm -hmm. <laughs> does that make sense absolutely can i speak mm -hmm. to why they say of course, of course. I know you are a fan of email lists as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's important. For several reasons, um, social media is a very busy place and we're very often distracted. So even if you have a big following on Instagram or on Facebook, that doesn't mean that everyone sees what you do. There's a lot going on. Um, <clears throat> So they might know you, they might like what you do, but for them to actually be super attentive that, hey, there is a retreat coming up, that requires a little bit more work. Whereas in your email, people are less distracted and you speak directly to this person. They read your mm -hmm. headline and they think, ah, oh, that's interesting. I want to read that email. And now we're not distracted by other people in the feed or on the story. The mm -hmm. other thing with this is that social media has borrowed land, as they say in marketing terms. If Instagram decides to leave or say, we're going to quit the channels, your community is gone. My own. <laughs> How do people find out about your retreats again, right? Mm -hmm. the email list is super important to build community, mm -hmm. nurture your relationships, and actually grab the attention of people that want to invest in what you do and in this case a retreat mm -hmm. amazing absolutely and then the other thing the other the third point that i would like to share today for those of you who are starting something that you could do it's to attend a retreat or to help someone else who is doing a retreat collaborate or even having some work experience in a retreat center this is big part of my background is working in retreat centers that's why i know retreats from the inside out because you get to get a different perspective <clears throat> so yeah those are things that i would say if you are at the beginning of your journey you can absolutely do that now let's say if you are already on fire if you are like no i want to go ahead i want to do my retreat i'm so ready for this take me there okay Let's start then see what are the very key aspects, okay? Mm -hmm. The first one, and actually this is something that uh, actually you could do even if you don't have so much experience, but something you could start doing right now, regardless of your experience, is to connect with venues. Mm -hmm. Maybe you already have in mind where you would like to run a retreat. Maybe uh, you can connect with the venue and you can start asking them the important questions. What are those important questions? Okay. What questions? <laughs> what are those important questions to ask to the venue? Of course, you want to know what their contract is. You want to understand the terms and conditions, in particular when it comes to the deposits, okay? Remember, when you're going to run a retreat and you want to book a venue, most likely you're going to have to leave a deposit. And if for some reason that retreat doesn't sell, 
you are likely to lose that deposit or you might need to postpone. Some venues allow you that possibility of postponing. But, you know, those are things that you want to understand. Cancellation policy, uh, whether or not they are going to publish your retreat in their website or they're going to be doing some marketing with, uh, with their retreat that you're going to be running on their venue. And another important aspect, uh, if they have the option of farm trips. I don't know if you're familiar with the term farm trip. Maybe people here in the community, they don't know what a farm trip is. This is a hotel language. Farm trip stands for familiarization trip. It means you as a retreat leader interested into running a retreat in the, in the hotel or the venue that you want to go, they might have a special offer for you. They might have a discount. And what a better thing uh, if you want to, let's say, I know you've been in Morocco, uh, Annie, and you are here uh, now and then. And imagine you want to run your retreat in Morocco. What a better thing uh, or idea would be, What it, uh, you know, the best idea for you, if you can do that, if you have the time and, and you can handle that, just to go there to the venue and spend a few days to understand how that would feel mm -hmm. like. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Exactly. It reminds mm -hmm. me of my life in Morocco. <laughs> this is exactly what I did. Uh, I took a week with a friend of mine. We're actually hosting a retreat in March, coming March in, in Morocco. A different location from the one we went scouting. The one we went scouting, we want to do in December next year. And that's maybe one thing to take into mm. account as well, to not start planning your retreat a month in advance, but mm -hmm. really take your time to plan ahead, warm up your community, mm adjust your marketing to it and secure those possible before I arrive. Yeah, but it, absolutely. It, it, I think it's actually to, to feel really at ease yourself getting to your retreat. It's really useful, beneficial to actually go there beforehand, stay a few days and get a feel mm. for what it's actually like so that you can also speak about that again in your marketing. You know? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's that makes total sense. You know, you can take already a few photos. You can already warm up your, your people, you know, your community and tell them, hey, look where I am. It's beautiful. This is where I want to run my retreat. And you said, uh, yes, uh, you said, Annie, it's important to give yourself time. Uh, actually, I'm going to tell you this. Um, usually when I work with uh, my mentorship, one-on-one -on -one mentorship program for retreat leaders, Usually, I tend to work with people. I, I, I'm going to give ourselves six months at least. Mm -hmm. At least, at the very least. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say if we start working today, your retreat is going to be in October. I'm going to be, okay, that's okay. But earlier than that, I, it can be done. Uh, it can be done if you do have it, uh, if you have done retreats before or if you have a community that, you know, it's very used to retreats and so on, then perhaps it's possible. But if it's the first time that you are running a retreat, at least you want to give yourself um, a six months. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you that I am going to run my fourth retreat. Uh, I'm planning now my fourth retreat, and soon it's going to be coming on uh, an announcement about that. And I'm planning for April 2025. I'm giving myself one year because, you know, I want to have enough time. You know this, uh, Annie, you know how the marketing, it's like, you know, it, it requires time and, and so on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It makes me think, did you want to add something to this or can I ask you a question? No, please go ahead. Um, I just had a, a call with one of my uh, students as well, private coaching call, and he's hosting retreats in a place that is actually a retreat center. There are things that are going ongoing. What do you think is really important to bear in mind when we host a retreat, but we're not really clear yet on solutions, outcomes, the transformation? What can help in this case? What? Uh, what can help in this case? Of course, you are asking me the key question here, Annie. <laughs> And uh, basically, the key questions here is to ask yourself who this retreat is for. 
that's very important. And I want to make it super clear. And, uh, you know, I always say, let's face this. Your retreat, it's not for everyone in the internet scrolling for a transformative experience. We need to get super clear, super specific who our retreat is for. That is going to make it super easy for us to create the marketing, to create the experience, and for our ret uh, retreat participants to find mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Of course, as you say, you need to get very clear about that transformation we were talking about. What are those pain points that you are going to address in your retreat? And what are those benefits? Mm -hmm. This has to be there. It has to be there because otherwise there is so much, um, you know, retreats out there. And, and honestly, you need to be like, you know, go straight to the point. Usually when you, when you get to, to promote your retreat marketing, you want people to understand directly if this is for them or not. Mm -hmm. So that's super, super important. So the best question that I would say, the, the questions that I would ask myself right now, if I was at the beginning, if I wasn't very clear on who is this retreat for, that would be the question, who is this retreat for? And if once I think about that person, which is my ideal client, if they do have um, a, a well-being problem, that it's going to be addressed during my retreat. It's like kind of you need to make that connection. Who is that people? Uh, who is that person? What problems do they have? Am I able to solve those, prob uh, those problems during my retreat? And also, of course, being able to communicate that, you know, communicate that in your marketing materials. Does that make sense? Absolutely. <clears throat> Answer that amazingly, perfectly, super clear. And I think also think of this, it's already quite challenging to fill up regular yoga classes that are usually. Mm -hmm low cost, um, you have a community, people are not really showing up. Reason why is there's no clear reason for them to join you. Imagine you're filling up a retreat that usually costs quite a bit more and there is no clear reason. We're disconnecting here in nature. It's so beautiful here. Come and spend a week with me practicing yoga every morning. Why? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> solution or, or an outcome a purpose a reason why you join this that's going to help them or improve or feel better or do things differently to to make a change in their lives mm -hmm. absolutely this is this is key point uh Annie, and i'm so glad that you bring this up because it's super important to be super clear and to have a target you know a target um um approach you want to have a target approach you want to know exactly who this retreat is for and, and put all of that now another important aspect to consider here would be you know the typical questions where when and how much <laughs> those are questions you also need to understand where do you want to uh, run your retreat when that's going to happen as i say at least give yourself six months okay please give yourself that favor of giving a, a, enough time to yourself how much is it going to cost? How much is it going to cost to host that retreat in that venue? If you already communicated with that venue, how, how much is the room? How much is the food? Are you going to include some kind of transfer from into the airport, some excursion, gifts? You know, you need to really be super clear on what the, the experience is going to look like and how much money you're going to be offering. And in this phase, uh, um, Annie, once you have an idea of the place, once you have an idea of the venue and the price, this could be already an opportunity to announce that to your community. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to dive in into, into this a lot because I talked about this a few weeks ago in one of my lives on Instagram. For those of you who are watching this video or this live again, this is a reminder for you to go and get that uh, PDF guide that I created because you have links to, to, to what I'm going to mention uh, right now, which is when you book a venue, you pay a deposit, okay? So you want to avoid risking that deposit. How do you do that? Get that venue, get, get that PDF, sorry, and you will find the answer to that. <laughs> Because this is another whole conversation and I don't want to get very deep into that. But the key point here is to really understand 
how much it costs, you know, what is my cancellation policy, and so on and so forth. Um, the key questions in this space would be um, where and when do I want to run my retreat and why? Why do I want to do that location? Because, of course, like when you are thinking about the theme, uh, you may also want to make a connection between the theme of your retreat and, 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 and the place, right? Um, and also another critical question here uh, in this space, Annie, would be what's my minimum number of people? Because you are doing numbers, you are understanding how much is it going to cost to to run a retreat, and then you're going to uh, be able you, you're going to be able to understand how many people do you need to uh, to have to make this retreat? Mm -hmm. Because once you are calculating the prices, you are not only considering those costs that you gather, that information that you gather from the cost, but you are also including your revenue as retreat leader, because we are not doing this for free, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, that's the whole purpose of living, of doing what you love, right? You're alive. And this is one thing I really often see is that as yoga teachers, we, and teachers in general, I think humans in general, we love to give, we love to help people, we love to be there in all space. If we all could, we probably would do it for free, but you've got bills to pay, you've got grocery, mm -hmm. to do. you've got software, your email software, for example, mm -hmm. to pay for. So you, you need to make profit as well. Um, is there something that you would like to say about this topic? I think it's, this is a really sensitive and difficult or challenging thing for mm -hmm. most people starting out. Um, yeah, I mean, there is nothing, um, I think if, if it's the first time that you are running a retreat, I think there is nothing wrong into partnering up with someone and maybe doing the, the, getting the experience, you know, from joining that retreat and participating and stuff. But what I would like to say is that if you are organizing your own retreat, then it becomes like a bigger responsibility. It's not like you are going to, it's not that I, like I'm going to help uh, Annie on her retreat in Morocco. It means I'm going to be running my own retreat. So it means it's a different responsibility. And therefore, I think, yes, you need to, you need to consider your uh, revenue. You need to consider how much do you want to make. And if there is something that I would, um, something that I would uh, speak about, not a lot, uh, Annie, but something that I would say is that you also need to be intentional. I know you are also fond of being intentional. I hear you, you use this word a lot. I'm also very intentional and in, in you need to be intentional, really. You need to, to know, you, you want to know how much do you want to do, how many people at least you want to have to do the arbitrary and how much are you going to do with that minimum number of people. Those are things that you need to work on. Otherwise, uh, yeah, you are risking kind of, you know, wasting, not wasting your time, but, you know, not having the profit that, that you deserve for the work that you've been doing. Yeah, and we shouldn't forget that if you're hosting your own retreat, you're not just teaching yoga classes. Like you said, we're taking at least six months to prepare. That is six months of work as well. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. the context that you have with the accommodation, organizing, with answering questions or doing discovery calls, planning out your sessions, your, I was going to say curriculum, but the, the, the daily schedules. There's so much work that goes into this. Um, so we really need to step out of this scarcity mindset. I'm going to do it just low cost to make sure that mm. it feels up. Exactly. It's not realistic. And I think <laughs> one shift that is to focus on the value that you offer in this mm. retreat. Mm -hmm. Experiences, the that will play out in the rest of their lives that really it's not just happening in those seven days for example mm -hmm. but the effect that has throughout the rest of their life really um yeah i think actually manu that would be a session of its own <laughs> scarcity mindset in terms of charging for your products and retreats yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> But let's keep it to the point. It's just something to consider mm. when you're in this, everyone. Manu, is there anything else that we really need to know before we start up? 
Uh, well, I think in this phase, Annie, we would go, and uh, this is also like kind of also wrapping up this this live today. We're gonna move now into the marketing and promotion phase. Mm -hmm. As I say before, there is nothing wrong once you have all of those numbers. Once you have the pricing, you have the venue, you have the the. I mean, you have the idea of the venue, you have the dates, you have the pricing, then you can start promoting and telling your people, hey, you know, I do have a retreat coming up and perhaps some people already are going to be able to jump in and, and, you know, just like kind of pay the deposit so that you can um, also use that deposit for paying your venue. Um, but the, now the next thing, the next phase would be the marketing. Okay, so now that you are super clear, you know the cost, you know the place, etc. it's time to create your marketing. And one of the most important things to consider here is to have your landing page, okay? It's important to have a landing page for people to come and see and find all of that information. You know, dates, where this retreat is, who this retreat is for that's some of the most important information you know it's it's to to have that qualifier so that people understand if this retreat is for them or not um the price uh cancellation policy amazing photos and a pay me button you know a button where people can click and pay a deposit that's super important <laughs> okay so that's the marketing phase and what i would like to share with you annie here it's what are the place uh that are uh, the places that are important uh to consider when it comes to your to marketing your retreat and what are the the places that are interesting but we shouldn't rely so much on okay and of course the most important it's not a surprise we've been talking about this before you know it <laughs> your emails Manu. <laughs> exactly that would be it that would be your email list okay so those people who are in your email list uh they've been hearing from you for a long time and now it's the time to share this transformative experience for them also as i mentioned before you have your landing page your retreat landing page with all of the information where they can just come and see and of course you're going to be sharing that in all of your social media channels okay but i would say email list landing page would be the main two places to market your retreat of course your social media as well but you know any how social media is as soon as they know that you're selling something the algorithm it's gonna just kind of go down and you know facebook or instagram are gonna be like no 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 you need to pay me you need to do ads so but anyway you still need to to you still want to promote your, your retreat on social media um one common mistake that i see here annie is that some retreat leaders they organize their retreat and they are and they rely in places like book yoga retreats just to name a few there is all of these uh, marketing websites um which is it's not a bad thing okay it's not a bad thing to put your retreat there in fact when i run a retreat i tend to also to budget some uh a little bit of uh money for marketing in those pages sometimes some of them they got a uh, they get a percentage if they sell your spot so it's quite a good thing i am not say it's not a bad thing but do it as an additional thing to your market email marketing and your landing page okay and then the other thing it's the uh retreat center website this is another good add-on and i encourage you to ask the venue if they are going to promote your retreat in the website but do not rely only on those two do not rely only in the in the websites marketing retreats and in the venue website okay this is a common mistake that I see amongst many retreat leaders. They think that, you know, probably they think, of course, it's, it's going to give visibility to their retreat. But if you go to those websites, you are likely to have thousands of other retreats. And if you go to their retreat venue, usually they also have more other retreats. So you cannot rely on those, on those two. Mm -hmm. And they also mm -hmm. your community. Because this is the whole reason that we want to build our exactly. own community. People exactly. are much more likely to invest 
and strangers coming across your retreat on book yoga retreats or the venues place if the venue place even does that because there are many places that also don't help you with that right depends a lot on where it is i guess uh yeah i think it depends on the venue um when you come is that you say when it comes to the venue no, so there are venues, and I think it depends a little bit on the type of venue that you go with. Some people actually mm. go in an Airbnb, or they mm. hire, rent out a villa, mm. or there is, mm. but they don't actually help you with promoting it. It really depends mm. on the type of place. Um, mm. But yeah, the important thing is that we can't rely on it, and that that's why mm. this community, it really comes back to what we started speaking about, exactly. what you know, days before you actually do it. exactly exactly <laughs> very good so yeah i think i think uh annie this is all that we can share today i think there is a lot to take uh, to chew on in there you know because there are so many aspects as i say i'm super happy to come back um some other time and we talk about all the phases but this initial phase it's really, really important. And this is actually, to be honest with you, um, Annie, this is one of the uh, phases in which many retreat leaders or aspiring retreat leaders need support. And it's this initial phase, you know, understanding all of this process, uh, understanding how much is it, it's going to cost, deposit, uh, marketing, and so on. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely agree with you um there i just saw a question here earlier and we haven't had time yet to reply to this how much do you think you should charge for a retreat well that's not something that we can answer here because we need a lot of details for this yes <laughs> yes, yes yes of course it's it's um it's we cannot answer that because it depends on the experience depends on the experience that you want to offer depends on the place that you want to take your people depends on, on what you're going to do but my advice my advice usually it's to when you think about the final profit for you as the retreat leader for you as the retreat leader the person who has been organizing all of this and leading this experience what i would say is that at least with the minimum number of participants you want to make from seven to ten k i'm talking about euro seven to ten k euro because a retreat is not just one week it's months it's months and it's a lot of work so you want that to be um, um compensated in a way you want that energy to be you know an, an extra for that to be a balanced amount of energy exchange mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. agree with you. yeah but it depends so much on on your expenses location your niche your absolutely aspect. yes it depends on so, so other things so many other things yeah. a really personal one mm -hmm. um i don't i didn't plan on this but i actually really want to quickly want to speak to your idea of going to a retreat before hosting one We've got a retreat mm -hmm. coming up in March for wellpreneurs. So those that are interested in this want to build a daily routine that suits your wellness business. I'm helping you do that in a retreat in March. And I think Manu, you're really here to support people. You've got your own retreat coming up as well. Tell us a bit more about yeah. that. Yes, well, this I'm already uh, teasing here and there and talking a little bit. I almost have my landing page finished and I am hoping for everything to be ready by next month, by March. So in March, I'm going to be, uh, probably you're going to be hearing about my upcoming bootcamp. I'm organizing a bootcamp for, uh, uh, for uh, yoga wellness preneurs. And that's going to be in Thailand, which is a place that I uh, that I adore. I spend uh, many years living there. I live there half of the year. I'm running in in this place called Samahita Retreat, which is a place I know, love, and trust 100%. And that's all I can tell you for now, <laughs> Annie. This is this is all of the information that I can give you right now about my retreat. But you'll be hearing about that very soon. But the other thing that I want to tell you is that. You and I should organize a retreat in the future as well. 
<laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> that would be exciting. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I think uh, if if you are watching this and you want me and Annie organizing a retreat, joining <laughs> forces together, let us know because I would be super happy. Perhaps we can plan for, you know, sometime in the future. Yeah. Mm. 20, 26. Yeah, I love 26. it. That's yeah, 25, 26 <laughs> would work well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Let's discuss this. Um, don't forget everyone because Manu created an amazing PDF for you to help you plan your your retreat step by step. Make sure that everything is considered. You're not missing out. You're not making all those also common mistakes. It's not necessary. So download the PDF. If you received an email from me earlier today, it's in the email. Manu has got it in his link in bio as well. So go to Manu's profile, link in bio. Are there other places people can find it here on Instagram? Mm. Um, I think they can send us a DM. Either you and I or I, they can send us a, a DM and I'll be happy to, to share the link. Yes, same. And I'm just going to quickly, because I've got it here too. I'll quickly copy it here in the, in the comments. There you go. So it's in the comments here. If you want to download it, click on the link there. Are there any other questions from people that are watching? I forgot to ask earlier. Questions, everyone feel free to write it. Manu, is there anything else, last thing that you would like to add to this? Um, I would say, you know, uh, as I said before, um, Annie, it's a lot of work, but it's, it's, worth it it's worth it and in, in my experience actually all, all of this work before but then once you are running your retreat and once you finish your retreat and you see all of this amazing transformation you really realize that it was uh, actually worth it um also you know um what i would say it's that you also need to believe on yourself okay <laughs> i know especially for those who are at the beginning of their journey and they think that this is um, you know, something that they see in the dreams, but it's so far away and that they never going to be able to do that. You can absolutely do that. You can absolutely do this. Of course, you may need support and, uh, and I encourage you to find support as well, but this is something that anyone can do. Anyone can do. If you have the passion for this, it's just a matter of, you know, just, uh, learning how to do and just go for it. Mm -hmm exactly mm. one very quick thing that i want to speak to when you said this because i think it's when we fear it's not possible for us and we think that all our ideas our business our course our retreat our membership whatever it is that you want to create if we keep thinking it's in the future that's where it stays and if you start doing work today in the direction of your dreams then maybe yes it's going to take some time to get there but your work on it starts today and that's the only way to get closer to the dreams that you feel right now are far away they're not but there's work to do <laughs> absolutely absolutely uh annie and there is one thing that i i was um i i heard you saying this the other day and i was like wow that's like right to the point you say like if you're going to be working today into your dream, you want to embody that future business owner, that future entrepreneur. You need to really believe that, you know, what you're going to do, it's going to change people's life and you're going to have to believe in your, in, you know, what you are offering. Otherwise, if you don't believe in that, it's going to be very hard for people also to believe that you're going to be able to provide with that transformation. So, yeah, it, there is a lot of mindset as well it's uh it's um uh, it's also a work of you know talking to yourself in a gentle and nice way but also saying okay come on we can do this so yeah that's mm. a good training we have to go live and speak about that another time <laughs> absolutely <laughs> anytime well i'm super happy uh, you know i need to reconnect with you again uh and i'm also uh you know i'm also hoping to to interview you in my community so I'll, I'll touch base with you on that and, and yes, we'll, we'll get this ball rolling. Always. I'm 
I'm already excited about it. I'm definitely keen. Um, Mrs. Wild Child, can you please send us a DM? Because I think this is a really good question. Once a yoga retreat leader said that the price of the retreat should be three or four times the expense of hotel and food. Thoughts about that? Manu, I think you've got some thoughts about, do you quickly want to answer? Yes, I, I would say that it's not three to four times the expense of the hotel and food. You need to be intentional and understand what are the exact costs, mm -hmm. okay? Of course, um, you can always play with the final number and say that your final number is um, two. Uh, it's three thousand euro. You may play with that and do two thousand nine 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 for marketing purposes, just to make it a little bit more like kind of round number that incentivizes people to buy. But it's not about multiplying two or three times the, the cost of the venue or anything. It's about knowing exactly each cost of the retreat and the revenue that you want to do. That's the trick. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, and there's, there's so much to it. Maybe one day we'll speak about pricing your retreats. Mm -hmm. Think throughout this chat, we've come up with so many different topics. We should do a podcast series. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <yeah. laughs> yes, happy to. Happy to. Amazing. Casa Sanando will be a nice venue. Place for the Casanando. Casa, Casa Sanando. Perdón. Casa Sanando. She is my friend Kai. We work together in Thailand. Oh. Yeah, she has this amazing retreat center in the Camino de Santiago. Oh, oh really nice. Caetano, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Everybody, thank you so much for being here, watching us till the end. For those that join us a little bit later and you're interested in hosting retreats, watch it again from the beginning because it's been a really valuable um, interview, chat, training. <laughs> I think it's a combination of everything. Manu, I want to thank you so much for being here. It's been such a pleasure connecting with you again. That's really Wait, to do this again very soon. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye, Annie. Really nice to reconnect with you. Speak soon, everyone. <laughs> bye bye.